to the third speaker of today, um, Dr. Salo Manoto from the National Research Foundation and director here of the Research Infrastructure Section. It's really a pleasure having you here today. And I would say you set up and I try to get your presentation up and running. Thank you. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Silo Manoto from the National Research Foundation. I'm the director responsible for research infrastructures as well as imaging researcher programs. So when I got an invitation to present in this meeting, I thought it would be best for me to share with you a new program that we are currently working on called the Research Infrastructure Professionals Program. So over the past uh, few years, the NRF has invested a lot of money towards the acquisition of research equipment, but uh, there hasn't been investment uh, in, in, in human capacity development to ensure that those that make use of these research infrastructures uh, get the necessary training that they require. So the whole uh, purpose of this uh, program is to ensure that all those that uh, make use of this uh, research infrastructures get the adequate training. So I'm hoping that by the end of uh, this meeting, I will be able to, not today, but in the next three days, I will be able to get inputs for this program so that I can develop a fit for purpose funding instrument. So this is the outline of my presentation. I'm going to take you through the mandate of the National Research Foundation and then share with you the problem statement, the current interventions that we have in place uh, with regards to human capacity development. And then lastly, I'm going to take you through the proposed uh, program, which is the Research Infrastructure Professional Program. So the NRF is mandated by an act of parliament and we contribute towards the national system of innovation of innovation through the following four areas. The first one is in advancing knowledge, where we support research, provide research infrastructure platforms, as well as the provision of research, infra, research equipment. And then secondly, we transform lives, particularly those of postgraduate students, as well as emerging researchers. And then we inspire the nation, and we do that through science engagement. And this is through science education, awareness, and communication. And then lastly, we strengthen the NSI, and we do this by building partnerships and synergies, as well as providing system-wide information and intelligence. So as I've already stated, over the South African government has got a number of interventions to support and train researchers by giving them access to international facilities as well as training programs. And we hope that by giving uh, researchers access to these international facilities, this will ensure that the skills development and this will contribute towards building the skills and uh, result in South, Af in South Africa becoming globally competitive. And over the past uh, decade, there has been an increase in investment in research infrastructures, but this investment has not been matched with the requisite human capacity development, particularly for skills to ensure the optimal utilization, maintenance, and management of research in infrastructures. And as we are all aware, there is a positive correlation between the availability of research infrastructures and human capacity development in that uh, the more research infrastructures become available in the country, the greater the demand for skills required to operate those research infrastructures. And uh, the, the government, through the National Research Foundation and the Department of Science and Inno Innovation, has invested immensely in, in research infrastructures. And, uh, and this is not as I've already uh, alluded to, this has not included the requisite investment to ensure that there is human capacity development. So we are proposing that we need to have a program dedicated to address this gap. And this is the research infrastructure professional program that uh, I'm proposing. 
So the NRF has got a number of interventions that tries to address human capacity development of those that make use of research infrastructures. And the current existing programs that we have, we have the equipment related training grants which is ERTTG. In short, we've got the National Equipment Program, the Strategic Research Equipment, and then we've got the Professional Development Program, and the program that we currently in conceptualization stage is the Research Infrastructure Professional Program. And in my next slide, I'm just going to give you a snapshot of the different programs that we have. So the th through the ERTTG program, we make funding available for researchers, postgraduate students, so that they gain access to state-of-the-art research infrastructures that are not available at their host institutions. And we also make funding available for researchers to host and attend equipment-related workshops. And then for through the NEP, we make funding available for the acquisition, upgrade, and development of state-of-the-art research equipment. And the state-of-the-art research equipment that we fund ranges from between 1 million rands up to a maximum amount of 10 million rands. And this is for multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary research. And this covers broad fields of science, engineering, technology in order to improve research infrastructure to enable internationally competitive research in the country. Uh, another program that we have is the Strategic Research Equipment, which is a consortium-led uh, initiative where we fund research equipment that ranges between 15 to 35 million rands, and this is spread over a three-year period. This is to address the development of scale skills, as well as to address industry investment and involvement. And again, similar to NEP and uh, similar to NEP and e ERTTG, uh, there are some limitations where, with uh, these programs because there is no dedicated funding uh, to ensure that whoever gain access to to these uh, research infrastructures get the necessary training. Another program that we have is the Professional Development Program. Uh, this is uh, designed to enable outstanding masters and doctoral graduates to get uh, experience outside the university system. And it is tailored in order to accelerate their development and uh, to ensure that they, they, they strengthen the technological innovation through research and the utilization of state-of-the-art research equipment. So we are hoping that by giving, uh, uh, by giving postgraduate students access to this uh, state-of-the-art research equipment, this will lead to commercialization of product and services. So late, late last year, we, we undertook a survey where we wanted to see if the program is meeting its intended ob objective. So this is just a snapshot of the results that we obtained. So we, we asked the current and PDP fellows to give us an indication if they were able to gain access to state-of-the-art research equipment. And 71.6% of them agreed that, yes, indeed, we were able to gain access to this state-of-the-art research equipment, while 28 0.4% of the, our respondents indicated that they were not able to gain access to state-of-the-art research infrastructures. And from the 71.6% that were able to gain access to these research infrastructures, only 79.3% were able to get the necessary training, while 20% while were not afforded an opportunity to gain training on the infrastructure that we, they, were, they were utilizing. And then lastly, we asked them if they were able to generate any innovations, patents, technology demonstrators. And from the response that we got, only 17.3% of our respondents were able to generate innovations, while the majority of our respondents, accounting for 82.7%, were unable to generate any innovation, which is worrisome because you would expect that by giving access by giving the 
fellows access to this state-of-the-art research equipment, they will be able to generate innovation. So this speaks to maybe there was lack of adequate training to ensure that they are able to generate any innovations, which highlights the need for a program such as the Research Infrastructure Professional Program. So my next section of the presentation will focus on the proposed program, which is the Research Infrastructure professional program and this is intended to support scientists and operators in order to ensure that there is optimal research capability and the program is intended for highly skilled professionals such as your scientists, uniquely trained operators, engineers and data and information scientists. So we're going to support these fellows starting from a master's up to a postdoctoral level and graduates with a first degree in engineering data on information scientists will also be eligible for this program. So we did a bit of international benchmarking where we wanted to see if there are any other programs that are similar to what we are proposing. And nationally, there is no other program, but internationally, we could identify two programs. And the first that we could identify was the uh, ARISE program, which is intended to train scientists, researchers, uh, and those that uh, may develop technology so that they can become research infrastructure scientists. Another program that we identified was the RI train, which trains infrastructure managers so that they can manage the research infrastructures. So the objective of the program that we're developing is to strengthen, renew, and replenish, replenish the currently aging workforce. We want to ensure that there is succession planning where experienced operators, technicians, and engineers will be able to transfer the skills uh, to imaging as well as early career researchers. And then thirdly, we want to ensure that there is research capability and maximum utilization of research infrastructures. And then lastly, we want to transform the demographics of the research workforce that make use of research infrastructures by, by being deliberate in supporting black and female imaging career, career researchers and those that are living with a disability. So this is how the program will work. The program will have two tracks. The, the first track is intended for researchers, scientists, and operators, while track two is intended for engineers, IT personnel, as well as data scientists. So researchers, scientists with an honors degree can enter stage one of the program and undertake master's level studies for a maximum duration of three years. Unlike the current uh, funding instruments that we have that funds for just two years, this program will fund a master's for a period up to three years. After the three year period, the master's students can either exit the program or enter stage two of the program where they can undertake doctoral level studies. The maximum duration is up to four years, unlike the current programs that we have that only funds for three years. And then after their doctoral level studies, the candidates will then be given an option to choose whether they want to become research infrastructure scientists or research infrastructure operators. And we will fund these fellows for a maximum duration of three years. And then for track two, which is intended for engineers, IT professional, as well as data scientists, we're going to fund uh, these fellows for a maximum duration of three years. And since these fellows, since most of engineers, IT, and data scientists uh, do not necessarily choose the uh, research career pathway, we, we just going to fund them for three years. But those that would want to undertake master's level studies, we are going to give them an option. They can then branch out and enter into the first track that I've shown. So this is the proposed uh, budget allocation for the program. We are still trying to revise these numbers, but currently, the engineers and ICT professionals will get this, their starting 
salary will be around 260,000 rands, and this is the entry level of uh, engineers that we got from from the analysis that we did. And then for masters and doctoral students, we are going to fund them in line with the DSI NRF postgraduate funding policy. But again, we, we, we are still in consultation with the Department of Science and Innovation. We might revise these figures. And then lastly, for the postdocs, we're going to start them at 400,000 rands. And we piloted this uh, program and open the call in 2020 in 2022 but for next year we're going to afford an opportunity to universities as well because when we piloted this program we only targeted national facilities and other research institutions but universities were excluded in this program so we are hoping that uh, through this program, the research infrastructure professionals will learn how to optimally utilize and maintain state-of-the-art research infrastructures. We expect that these fellows will spend a portion of their time providing a service to internal and external clients, uh, doing technology development as well as respective research activities. And then lastly, uh, we expect that they will also uh, undertake a bit of teaching and training of students and users of research infrastructures. So when we are developing such programs, we need to be aware of the current and future global trends for research infrastructures so that when we develop uh, these programs, we are able to build skills that will be required in the future. So some of the trends that we identified are trends in big data innovations, which allows us to process data at very high speeds. We've got your robotics and autonomous systems. Uh, an example will be machine learning as well as artificial intelligence. We've got uh, population resource, uh, population research resources, resources, which allows us to do uh, longitudinal studies. And then we've got centers of excellence, which allows us to address the much needed uh, uh, emerging challenges, and then the emergence of COVID uh, increased the number of facilities uh, required for diagnostics as well as vaccine uh, production. So we've seen an increase in that trend. And then the last trend is the biological imaging facilities that we we are seeing. And uh, the NRF has invested a substantial amount of funding when it comes to biological imaging facilities. So this is my last slide. The other trends that we identified is on the research facilities for large and farmed, large and farmed animals, uh, the plant genetics, pathology, phenotyping, and agrotechnology. And then thirdly, we've got the ground-based observ observational astronomy. An example will be your telescopes. And again, uh, the Department of Science Innovation, as well as the NRF, has invested a substantial amount of funding in the telescopes, and we require skills in, 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 in this area. And then we've got the novel prototyping and fabrication facilities, which enable us to uh, transition our research into products and services. Then we've got your creative economy, which creates experience that can bring science to life. And then lastly, you've got your secular economy, which speaks to zero wastage. So this brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your time, and I welcome your input. Thank you.